So community energy is about participation, is about local engagement in our energy supply. For me, fundamentally, it's more about people and doing and activism and taking back control than it is about electricity and heat. We keep hearing that people need to be involved in tackling climate change and that can only really happen if people feel they can you know, manage and control things. So we just need to engage people by whatever means we possibly can in renewable energy and I think you know, community energy is a really good way of doing that. Community energy is when a group of people or a community of interest come together and they want to develop a renewable energy project um, and they want to do that by involving the community and they want to you know, share the benefits with the community. It could be about a group developing a hydro project or a wind turbine or a solar farm or solar panels on a building. But actually what it's starting to develop into um, now is things like energy efficiency, looking at um, electric vehicle transport and charging, energy storage and things like that. So um, it's certainly um, evolving into more than just generating energy. When we first started thinking about the wind farm, or Our Lemon Tower, which started out as a wind farm, it was really responding to the need for sustainable development. And there was a group of residents that came together. And my real push, I think, at that time was community development. Uh, rather than just being a wind farm where it's a company that's taking all the profits kind of out of the community, we felt that it needed to be owned by the community, run by the community, with benefits um, going back into the community. The, the turbines are at 4.7 megawatt capacity, enough to supply about 2,500 houses. And it was funded by um, a co-op share offer which raised uh, £3 million and then a bank loan from, from Triodos, which raised 5.25 million. There's a lot of people in the area who are members of AWAL, you know, the wind farm co-op. We've got about 60 community groups that are all members, and they all feel like they own it, and they talk about it as their turbines. And that's really rewarding and really satisfying. So there's a range of groups, like the, the local rugby club, you know, the, the local schools all own shares, youth clubs, old age groups. Uh, which gives them some income coming in that they can sort of depend on. And that's really what's sort of given us a you know, massive boost to take other projects forward. So we set up another co-op called Egni. And so the last year we've been really busy installing s solar on community buildings, schools and businesses. And it's actually now the, the largest rooftop solar co-op in the UK. And that again is helping to tackle climate change. It's also saving the sites about £110,000 a year in electricity costs. Progressing the project from the wind farm and from the solar, we've now bought Hubba Gorse. It's the old primary school that was closed down in 2016 and we're turning it into a zero carbon arts education and enterprise centre. This is going to be our Wellamanta West head office as well as a community arts project. It's something the community needs badly and this school would have been going derelict otherwise. So if it wasn't for our element of where there'd be a sorry state on this building. I would like to see a zero carbon future for this area. It feels like we've we have come a long way but we've got a long way to go. A lot of exciting ideas for the future. We had an idea to try and build a, a greener, more sustainable future for the community. So one thing we wanted to do was to exploit some of our natural resources uh, and in particular water coming down the hillsides, uh, the mountainsides uh, around us. So we looked at uh, hydro schemes and as part of that we raised uh, almost a million pounds from 320 subscribers. Uh, about half those were very local. Uh, and the rest were UK wide with a couple actually being based outside the UK. And in the end we got five hydro schemes built. This particular scheme we're at today is Kum Gi, which was the first scheme that we built. It's a 30 kilowatt peak scheme. So in total our five schemes produce uh, about 500 megawatt hours of electricity each year. That equates to the electricity used by about 150 to 200 homes. 
the power is generated by the fall generating pressure uh, and then there's a turbine house at the end uh, which uh, exports the electricity to grid. We will get the benefits both from generated electricity from feed-in tariffs but also export electricity uh, until 2035. This project is owned by a community benefit society uh, called Gallery Generation. It has 423 shareholders um, of varying ages, most of which live in the local area, about 70% of which uh, live in, in the local area. And it's a cooperative in that it's democratically run. There's an elected board of um, directors um, and each year that board reports back to the members and says look this is how the solar farm's done this is what we're recommending as an interest payment and in due course we'll then ratify any decisions about community benefit through the members. So this site is, is a megawatt it's 3,300 or so panels it generates enough electricity for about 300 households when the sun's shining so one of the challenges for community energy or for renewable energy as a whole is that uh, you know most forms of renewable energy are intermittent. Solar farms, when there's daylight hours, they generate electricity, they generate more electricity when it's not cloudy and it's not raining. So solving the riddle of intermittency is something that's plagued renewable energy for, for years. And what is exciting is that there is a, is a solution and the innovations that are coming along with battery technology um, so it's possible now to store electricity for longer it's cheaper to install batteries it's cheaper to build them and the technology is getting better and better and better so um, we've had a successful uh, funding application and we've used that to buy a tesla battery uh, it's a 220 kilowatt uh, battery. So what essentially the solar farm is doing is it's charging the battery and we've got a really exciting partnership with Ecotricity uh, and we'll be selling the electricity to local people in partnership with them. So people will be able to buy local energy and know that then the profits from that scheme are supporting this project that then filters down into the community in some shape or form. One of the great things about community energy, I think, is that it allows the community to think of ideas they'd like to do, whether it be about fuel poverty, climate change, even growing projects, anything that, that strengthens the community resilience. And they can think of these ideas and they can come to a community benefit society like us and say, look, we've had this idea, what do you think? and we can have the members vote on it and then we can actually fund it. So if they want to put beehives in this field, we could do that. If they want to put solar panels, if they want to get an electric minibus, we can help fund that. So it allows the community to, to think in, in, in ambitious terms about action on climate change. And we're in a very privileged position now as the owners of the wind turbine to, to be able to fund those ideas and to strengthen the community that way. And this is the village of Salim, and of course the village of Salim therefore is in first in the queue for any benefit that we get. So if the community come to us with ideas, and this is one of the ideas that they came to us, they wanted solar panels for their village hall. But then with, with expertise within the community energy sector, we worked with Gwent Energy on this. We put in a battery as well, uh, we put in LED lighting, we helped uh, suggest an air source heat pump. We've also put the electric vehicle charging point in. And what, what we found since we've installed this kit is they, they don't have any electricity bills anymore, which is a great saving for the community. You know, they must be saving many thousands of pounds a year. So what, what's really exciting to me as well about Community Energy is the opportunity to supply the electricity that we generate to the community and for the community to benefit directly. So at the moment we're talking with Good Energy to supply our electricity to the local schools. So the local schools have lower energy bills. They come and visit the wind turbine. They know where their electricity is coming from. They, they, they appreciate that the electricity um, is coming from a renewable source that's, that's benefiting the local community. 
So looking to the future for the community energy sector, I think there's a real opportunity, particularly in Wales, where we've got the Wellbeing of Future Generations Act and we've got a government that's declared a climate and ecological emergency. There's a massive opportunity for government and public bodies to work in partnership with the community energy sector um, to develop the zero carbon future that we're all sort of looking for and wanting to develop. The benefits are pretty much proven both as a way of generating control, stopping fuel poverty, improving things like insulation in homes, reducing electricity use. I do think that we've got all the solutions, we've got all the answers, we've got some really innovative things going on and it's actually changing the balance of where people are getting their energy from, people's relationship with, with energy in, infrastructure. It is the field for the future, it's, this is where we all want to be heading because not only are we addressing the, the climate change agenda and we're supporting renewable energy but it's also about supporting local communities and local people so it's building resilience at a local level for the future, for a sustainable future.